In this video, I'm going to give you a basic introduction into unit cells. Now, there's three structures you need to be familiar with. The first one on the left is the simple cubic structure. The second one in the middle is the body-centered cubic structure. And the last one is the face-centered cubic structure. So each of these cubes represent a single unit cell. And for the simple cubic structure, within one unit cell, there's only one atom. For the body-centered structure, you have two atoms per unit cell. And for the face-centered cubic structure, there are four atoms per unit cell. The coordination number of the simple cubic structure is 6. I'm going to run out of space, so I'm just going to write C equals 6. That's the coordination number. The coordination number is the number of atoms that's attached to a single atom. So every atom in the cubic structure is attached or adjacent to six other atoms. For the body-centered cubic structure, the coordination is eight. If you look at the atom in the middle, you can see that it's attached to eight other atoms. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth one is in this other corner that you can't see based on the way it's drawn. The coordination number for the face-centered cubic structure is 12. Now the next thing we need to talk about is the volume. About 52% of the volume of the cube actually consists of the volume of the atoms in this cube. So 48% is empty space. For the body-centered cubic structure, it's 68% efficient. So what that means is that out of the entire cube, the atoms are arranged in such a way that they occupy 68% of the total space in the cube. So that means 32% is unused space. Now the face-centered cubic structure is the most efficient cubic structure. The percent by volume is 74%. So the way the atoms are arranged, they're arranged in such a way that they take up the most space. They're maximizing the use of the volume of the cube. So only 26% is empty space in that structure. So that's why it's also known as the cubic closest packing, because it, it's the most efficient use of space when the atoms are arranged in the face center cubic structure. Now the next thing we need to talk about is the edge length. The edge length I like to call x. Now other textbooks might use different letters, but x is basically the side length of a cube. So that's the edge length. R is the radius. So this is the radius. And for this structure, this is the radius here. Now for this uh, sphere inside, this is the diameter, which is twice the radius. And here, this is R. This is 2R, and this is R as well. Now, what you need to know is the relationship between the edge length and the radius, that is the atomic radius, of the atoms in each of these structures. For the simple cubic structure, X is equal to 2R. So what that means is that the edge length is twice the value of the atomic radius of the atoms in that structure. Now, if you want to visually see it, here's another R. So therefore, this whole thing is X. So X is 2R. Now, for the body-centered cubic structure, the edge length, X, is equal to 4 over root 3 times the atomic radius. Now, this information is useful if let's say you're given the density of an element and you want to find the edge length or the atomic radius of that element. And they'll have to specify which structure you're dealing with. Sometimes you might be given the atomic radius and you need to calculate the edge length in a certain cubic structure as well as the density of the material. So I'm going to go over some example problems on that in a different video. Now, for the face-centered cubic structure, 
the edge length is equal to the square root of 8 times r. So you may want to write this information down if you have a test on this stuff. Now let's go over the simple cubic structure. Let's focus on this structure and the details that we mentioned. Now we said that there's one atom per unit cell. So here's how you can get that answer. What we need to realize is that in a simple cubic structure, there's eight atoms that's at the edge of the cube. Now notice that we don't have a whole atom, but each atom at the edge is one eighth of an atom. And so one eighth times eight is equal to one. And that's why there's only one atom per unit cell in the simple cubic structure. Now why is the coordination six? Well, if you focus on one atom, there's going to be another atom above it and another atom below it. There's going to be another atom to the right and another atom to the left. Or you could say this is uh, east and this is west, or basically just the x direction. And let's call this the z direction. Now there's also another atom in the y direction as well. So therefore, every atom is surrounded by six other atoms. And that's why the coordination number is equal to six for the simple cubic structure. Now, as we already mentioned, the edge length is two times the radius of the atom. So let's call this R. And this is R. And the edge length is equal to X. So this side is x and this side is x. The volume of a cube is length times width times height. So it's going to be x times x times x. So therefore, the volume of a cubic structure, or the entire cube, is x cubed, is the edge length raised to the third power. But each edge length is equal to 2r. It's twice the atomic radius. So make sure you remember this equation when dealing with simple cubic structures. Now the last thing we need to talk about is the volume. We said that the atoms in the simple cubic structure only use 52% of the volume of the entire cube. Now to get this ratio, or this uh, decimal value, which is 0.52, you need to take the volume of the atoms in the unit cell and divide it by the volume of the cube. So there's only one atom per unit cell and the volume of a spherical atom is 4 over 3 pi r cube. The volume of the cube is always going to be x cube. So what we need to do is replace x with 2r. So we're going to have 4 over 3 pi r cube divided by 2r raised to the third power. So that's 4 over 3 pi r cube. 2 to the third is 8. And then this is going to be r cube. So you can cancel r cube. Now, 4 thirds pi, that's 4 pi over 3, as a decimal, if you want to write it, it's 4.1888. And then divide that by 8. If you do that, this will give you 0.5236. So 52.30%, excuse me, 52.36% of the volume of the cube is basically the volume of the atoms that are in the unit cell. So that's how you can get this value. Now let's talk about the body-centered cubic structure. So we said that there's two atoms per unit cell. Now you need to realize that every atom at the corner is one-eighth of an atom. Now we know that there's going to be eight corners to deal with. This is number one. Let me use a different color. That's the first corner. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and the eighth one is in the bottom left, if you were to extend this picture. So it's going to be one-eighth times eight,
and then don't forget the atom in the middle. So that's one whole atom. So 1 eighth times 8 is 1 plus 1, it's 2. And that's why we say that there's two atoms per unit cell in the body-centered cubic structure. Now the coordination number is 8. And as we mentioned before, it's easy to see that. And this atom at the middle is attached to eight other atoms, which is basically the eight corners. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the other one that you don't see, which is supposed to be there. So the coordination number is 8. Now let's calculate the volume of the body center cubic structure, at least the ratio of the volume used by the atoms relative to the volume of the entire cube. However, before we should do that, we need to talk about the edge length. Now we said that the edge length is 4 over square root 3 times r. So let's see how we can come up with that figure. Now for the body centered cubic structure, what you need to realize is that this is r and from here to here is 2r and this is another r. So let me just redraw this so you could see what I'm talking about exactly. So here is the sphere in the middle, and then here is the sphere at the this edge of this cube, and here's the other a sphere. So this sphere, that's twice the radius, that's the diameter, and then this is r, and this is r. So the distance between the bottom edge of the cube and the top edge, that's 4r. That's what we need to realize for the body center cubic structure. So the longest diagonal of the cube is 4r. Now let's see how we can relate that to the edge length of the cube. Now we know that every side of the cube is equal to x. Now let's call the, the diagonal between these two points. Let's call it L. That's different from the diagonal that we want to find, which is here. That's D. So notice that this is a right triangle. Hopefully you can see the right triangle. The right triangle is at the bottom face of the cube. And so therefore we can say that L squared is equal to x squared plus x squared. So now we need to draw another right triangle, which has L as the base. This is the next hypotenuse. One of the legs is x, and the hypotenuse of this triangle is the longest diagonal, d. So focusing on the triangle in green, we can see that L squared plus x squared is equal to the hypotenuse of the triangle, d squared. So in this equation, we need to replace L squared with x squared plus x squared. And so we're going to get this equation. L squared, which is x squared plus x squared, and then plus this other x squared, that's equal to d squared. So 3x squared is equal to d squared. Now if we take the square root of both sides, the square root of 3 times the edge length x is equal to the length of the diagonal. And the length of the longest diagonal, we can see that it's 4r. So root 3x is equal to 4r. So solving for x, we need to divide both sides by the square root of 3. And so the edge length, I'm not sure what happened there, the edge length is 4 over root 3 times r. So that's how you can relate the edge length to the atomic radius of the atoms in the body-centered cubic structure. So now we can calculate the volume that's used up by the atoms relative to the volume of the cube. And we said it was 68% for the body center cubic structure. So let's confirm it. So let's find the ratio of the volume used by the atoms divided by the volume of the cube. Now we said that there's two atoms per unit cell. 
So it's going to be 2 times the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, divided by the volume of a cube, which is x cubed. So now what we need to do is replace x cubed with 4 over root 3 r raised to the third power. So feel free to pause the video and simplify that expression. Show that it's equal to 68% or 0.68. So what I have is 2 times 4 times 1 third. That's basically 2 times 4 third times pi times r cubed. Now 4 to the third power is basically 3 4's multiplied to each other. And then I have a, a square root of 3. I basically have three of them. But whenever you combine two radical threes, it's simply equal to three. So two of them will change into a three, so I have one root three left over. And then I also have r cubed. So I can cancel r cubed. I could cancel a four. And I can cancel a three. So what I have left over on the top is two pi. On the bottom, I have four times four, which is 16 divided by root 3. So now I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by root 3 so that these will cancel. So then the answer is 2 pi times root 3 divided by 16. Now let's multiply 2 pi times root 3 and that's 10.8828 and then divide that by 16. So this will give you 0 0.6802, which is basically 68%. So 68% of the volume of the cube is occupied by atoms. And as you mentioned before, the other 32% is the empty black space that we see here. So that's all you need to know for the body-centered cubic structure, at least for now.